So welcome again to our Flubaru webinar. It is a session about a Google add-on that will allow you to quickly grade multiple choice questions or fill in blank assignments. And what I hope to do with you today is to actually introduce you to many interesting tools and also to show you some things actually live by going in and doing it with you. Just a few words about myself, if you haven't participated in our sessions before. Uh, my name is Monica. I have been working in the, Alpha, in the Alpha Plus organization for over 15 years. That's also how long I have been with the adult literacy education field. Um, my job is to look at technology and see how it can be used in adult literacy programs by instructors, by learners, and in administration. And as we go and explore different tools, I love to meet different people, uh, connect with them, find out what they like to do, and potentially share with them tips and ideas so that we can learn together. Quickly about the webinar. So we are going to go through a few housekeeping tips just so that you are more comfortable with the tool itself. Uh, I will have a few questions for you, and those questions will help me figure out where you are when it comes to Flubaru and potentially Google Documents. Um, also, I will go over Google Forms, which is a tool that works with Flubaru. And then we are going to learn how you can apply Flubaru directly in your surveys or questions. I'm going to show you a few examples, and then I'll share some resources with you. And finally, we are going to do feedback and upcoming webinars information. But my main objective for today is really to introduce you to the Flubaru tool and show you how it works. So when it comes to housekeeping tips, there are just a few. Um, if you have used GoToWebinar before, you will know that usually on the left side, you will have the section that displays the content I'm sharing with you. And today I'm sharing slides that um, I will be going through the session, and then we are going to go live. So you will be looking at website pages that I will be navigating through. I'll try to take it easy and go slowly so that you can navigate with me. But if there are any questions or issues, please don't forget that I can always stop or slow down as well. Now, on the right side, you're going to find different tools that are specific for you, for your control panel, where you can change your audio settings and where you can post questions. That will be the main way to communicate with me because during the session, all microphones are muted. Um, another option will be to raise a hand. There is an option for you in the tools to raise a hand, and that way you can also communicate with me to flag to me that there is a question or something. But the best way is to actually put in questions in the question box. So when it comes to the actual session today, um, as I mentioned, your microphones will be muted. And uh, I also just want to flag that you will, will record the session. So your name, information you're posting may show up um, on the recording as well. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a few questions for you. And what that means is I'm going to pose the question to, to you and I'm going to pop up a poll that you should see on your screen. And when that happens, I will ask you to actually answer a few questions. So the very first question that should pop up on your screen will be, do you use online tests or quizzes with your students? And you just have to select yes or no. OK, I'm going to close the poll and then show you the results. And you will see we only have a few participants. So 50% said yes and 50% and said no. So that's good to know. Now I'm going to hide the results and I'm going to ask you one more question. And the second question that I have for you is, are you familiar with Google Forms? OK, so let's close the poll and see the results. So 50% again is familiar with Google Forms, but don't use them much, and 50% uh, not familiar with Google Forms, which is good for me to know because that's something that I would like to share with you today. And I will be going through some of the information about the Google Forms. However, I'll go quickly through it. In my example, you will see me doing everything step by step. So hopefully that will be useful if you haven't used Google Forms before. And the final question, the last question for you, will be if you actually tried Flubaru before. Okay, 
So 50% tried it and 50% haven't tried it. Perfect. This is a really good breakdown. If you have tried it before, if you have used Google Forms before, I really encourage you and invite you to uh, come um, and, and post questions or comments in our question box as I'm going along to contribute to our session today. That will be very, very helpful. Um, of course, if you have any questions when you tried it and you were not sure how to go about that, I will be very happy to answer those questions as well. So now let's just move on to the next slide and clarify what Fluboro is really about. And it is a free tool, so you can go and install it on your Chrome browser that allows you to quickly grade multiple choice and fill in blank assignments. Basically, anytime you do um, yes and no answer or a box, that's when the Fluboro can be applied to calculate the results and give you the evaluation. It works very well with Google Forms, and that's usually a tool that you can use within the Google environment to create all kinds of forms, surveys, questionnaires. But what Fluboro can also do is that it calculates average assignment scores. So for example, it will tell you if half of the class answered the questions correctly, it will tell you which uh, questions students struggled with, and then it will also allow you to send, send information to the students. If you got their email address, you will be able to actually send them their grade and their answer key. So they will be able to see the results directly uh, within their own account. And you can also add feedback to the information you're sending to the student. So on this slide, I'm including a link to a video that you can watch after the session. And that way, it will give you a bit more information. There's a lot of resources I'm going to share with you. Not a huge range, but very good resources provided directly from Fluboro that I think you will find very useful. They do sync information step by step, so you can literally follow the information. Um, if my information is not clear, then you can use the other information as well. And I will be sharing that with you at the end of the session. So let's move on to the next slide. I do have to start with Google Forms because that is the tool that you need to use if you want to use Fluboro. Uh, and Google Forms is a type of online survey. Um, it allows you to do quizzes, tests that you can set up as long as you have a Gmail account. When you have your Gmail account, you basically have access to Google Drive. And within Google Drive, you will have Google Forms. It is a part of the apps family. So there are other applications available to you as well, such as Google Docs or Google Sheets. But for today, we are talking about Google Forms. And when it comes to Google Forms, you can really use it for many different purposes. For example, you can ask a learner when they come to the program to contact to provide contact information. Or you can ask questions at the beginning of the class or at the end of the class. For example, you can have the student go to the form and say, how did you like this topic? Or how was your day? What are you expecting from today? All kinds of general questions that can engage the student and introduce them a bit to technology while they're, they're learning different things. You can collect homework assignments, so you can create all kinds of assignments online and have students fill them out, whether they're in class or potentially maybe uh, they can access it by email. Um, and of course, you can set up all kinds of surveys. Um, maybe when can you go to a class trip? How did you feel about the session? How do you like our program? All, all those can be set up using Google Forms. But the main one and the one that I want to focus on today is really the tests and quizzes for students. Because very often what we see, and I'm going to go through example today, is that students still use a lot of paper documentation. So they will be doing assignments and tests and small activities on paper. But what you can do is you can blend the learning a bit, and you still can do information and learning from books and resources, but you can ask students to do some of that information and activities to do them online. So where does the flu bar will fit in? The idea basically is that when you create a form and the student fill out the form, what you can then do is you can use Fluboro to calculate and evaluate the results. So if you have 30 students and you will have to go one by one to figure out if they got everything right, that may take a bit of time. But if you set up a Google form and then apply Fluboro to it, it will analyze the results for you and it will tell you how many students got which answer right, which answer wrong, what was the average for the class, it will also highlight questions where the students actually struggle. So if there is a question where the majority of the students had a hard time, the system will flag it to tell you this question may be a bit tricky or this question may need another review because students didn't get the information. So this is a good way for you to actually get feedback from students and from the system as well. 
I'm going to use one example through the slides to show you what I mean when it, it comes to applying Fullbaru to the tools. And then what I hope to do is to go live and recreate this process with you live. So bear with me. I'm using the slides first because I would like to explain the process. And in this case, for today, I'm using a reading notes from an activity where the learner or student has to review words that they are working with. And it specifies what is a coworker, what is schedule, switch, shift, break, and take my shift. And what the learner has to do is they just have to fill in the blanks below to see if they understand the language, to practice their skills, and so on. So this was a paper document that was provided to me by one of the instructors that I worked with. What I'm suggesting now is taking this paper document and creating an online survey or questionnaire or test or quiz, however you would like to call it, to see if the student actually can answer the questions, but online. So here's how I would go about that. I would go to Google Drive, and again, in the live version, I'll show you how to do that. And then in, when you're in Google Drive, you can create something called a Google Form. So you will just click on New, More, Google Forms, and you will have a pop-up that will say, here is a title form. What name do you want to give it? What questions do you want to ask? You go on and you build a form. That's the questionnaire or questions or tests you would like to give to your students. Uh, when you're building that questionnaire, what I would suggest is that you always remember to add the student name so they actually fill in the information, what's their name, and also you ask them for their email. The email information would be useful if you're planning to email the student the results. If you don't, then you don't have to ask for the email. But if you're working with students who are comfortable with email, that's another option that you can use. If you don't ask for the email in the survey, Fuluburu will not be able to email the results to the students. So you cannot add email later on. It has to be added at the beginning when they fill out the form. So I'm going to use just some screen captures for you to take you through the steps and then explain the process again in the live situation. So after, after you create the form, what you will do is you will share the form with the students. And I just have a screen capture so you will see on the purple box in the top right corner, there's an option to click send. What I will do is that if you wanted to email, it will ask you what's the email address, where do you want to send it? If you wanted to share it by link, there's also an option to get the link for that survey. And then you can just email the link or you can tell students to go to a specific link to find the survey. There's even embedding code, which allows you to embed the code in a specific website. So if you have administrative rights to any website or you use a website with your students, you can embed the form in there as well. And then what happens is the system will give you the link. So in this case for today, I'm going to show you what happens when I created a form using Google Form. I'm just going to navigate away from the slide and go to a new page. I hope it's going to pop up on your screen soon. Um, what you should see is something called Workplace Vocabulary Activity. I applied a nice layout to it. I gave it a different look. And then in this case, I chose to use multiple choice. And what I did is I did a review saying what a coworker is, what schedule is, what switches, shift and break. And then I created a form. And the students then can go through the form, they can add their name, and they can answer the questions as multiple choice questions. So they will just go in and fill in the actual uh, questions. And when they finish, they will hit submit. What will happen next, I'm just going to go back to my slides to go to the next page to show you, is that when they fill out this form, um, the information will be gathered into Excel spreadsheet. But before that happens, what I would also suggest is that you, as the person creating the survey, fill out the survey as well. And the reason for that is that you need to provide answer key. You need to tell the system which answers are right. So what better way than you going in and putting in your name and the right answers to the questions that will show up in the actual Excel spreadsheet. So when that all happens, the next one is the results. So what I did when I was preparing for this session, I created a survey. I went in a few times as a different person and answered the questions. In some cases, I answered them right. In some cases, I answered them wrong, just so that I can show you the results. But this is what the form will look like. So again, I'm just going to open a new window. And this is how Google Forms will display the results. So what it will do is it will create something that look like, it looks like Excel spreadsheet. It will tell me when the entrance was entered into the system, so the timestamp for when the survey was filled out. 
the name of the person if it was asked. If you ask for email, it will show here as well. And then answers to each and every question that was asked. So that's where you will be going through Google Forms to create tests or questions and then to gather the feedback. What will happen next, I'm going to go back to my slides, is that when you get to the next slide and you apply Fluberu tool, what will happen is Fluberu will analyze the results. And what it will do is it will tell you how many points were possible, so how many questions were assigned, there were five. Uh, what was the average? So three and a half questions were answered properly. Um, how many submissions? What was the low score? It will highlight the percentage of a student who was low. So in this case, the system tells me Bob had a wrong answer many times. So it's only 20% that was right for him. So that's something to flag and pay attention to. So the system is trying to analyze the information for you. Any questions? As always, feel free to just submit the questions through the question box. I will be checking them and I can always come back and review them. But what I would like to do next is just to do a quick summary, because if you understand the process, it will be a lot easier for you to understand where Fluber comes in. So when you start, you create a Google form and you ask to include the name and email fields to make sure you can gather that information. Then you share the form with students. It could be through email, link, or embedded in a website. Then you have students fill out the form, and you should fill out the form as well to create response key. And then when the responses are gathered, they will be gathered in Google Forms as well, and you will be able to display it in a spreadsheet format. So you can see the information very quickly. And when you're in that spreadsheet, that when you apply Fluberu add-on to evaluate the results. So what I'm going to do next is going to show you how do you add Fluberu to your Google Form. When you are in the Excel spreadsheet itself, in the top navigation, one of the options is for you to click on add-ons. And that's sort of extra programs and tools that different parties, different people develop. And you can use them to enhance some of the work you're doing with Google Drive, Google Forms, Google Docs. So in this case, Fluberu was developed by a teacher who was trying to gather information on their students and making the process a bit easier. So to get it, you would click on add-ons and then get add-ons. What will happen next is you will have a list of possible add-ons you can choose from. There are hundreds, if not thousands of those. But what you will need to do is to look for Fubaru, and when you find it, you will click on plus free symbol because it's a free, a free tool, and that will install it on your own browser. Keep in mind, you have to be logged in into your Gmail account to do that. And what also will happen is that the system will ask you to accept terms. What that means is that it may gather some information about you because it's trying to communicate and gather the data as well. So you will have to accept the terms to be able to install it. And then when that gets installed, it will be available to you all the time. So the installation happens only once so that you will be able to find it in your add-ons. So now what I'm going to do is to going to show you the process from the beginning to the end when we actually have the Excel spreadsheet with all the results in, and I now want to test and see how Fluber will work. So I have my results at the bottom, all the information came in, and you will see there's Anna, Bob, John, Chris, and then Jenna. So there's five results. Uh, Anna is the instructor, and that's where the response key will be coming from. So in reality, what will happen is the system is going to say, okay, which one is the instructor? This is my response key and I'm going to measure everybody else against that response key. So to do that, I click on add-ons. Fluberu is now installed, so it shows up in the list, and I'm going to say grade assignment. When I click on that, the system pops up a few questions for me. So the very first step is going to be to tell the system which one is uh, a regular field, which one is a question field, so the system will know what to look at. And in this case, for example, in the very first one, it will say, okay, in this case, when we ask question, please provide your name, that is not a question, that is a student. So the system says, this is a student, so I'm not counting this in results. But the next ones is going to be question one, question two, question three. It's assigning normal grading because that basically means measure this one, count this one as a question. Now, after I select all this and make sure that this is all right, I can click on the next one and step two, 
will be that's where the system will be asking me, so which one is the answer key? Which instructor, which entry is the answer key? So the proper answers that I measure against. And in this case, I just needed to click on a select Anna because that was the instructor's entries. Click on that and continue. When I continue with that, the system will pop up a box that will tell me now everything has been created. The worksheet contains a grade for each submission and extra information. And what's also nice is that the grade is a separate worksheet within the same document. What that means is that when I look at my spreadsheet, you will see that there's two tabs. Student submissions is content that came in when the system was gathering all the responses. And grade is a new tab that was created by Fluberu, and that's where Fluberu added all this information, measuring all four students against Anna. Notice Anna is not showing anymore because Anna wasn't really a student. Anna was the answer key. So that tells you all this information about what was completed, what information was there, and you can analyze this information in a quick way. So that's a nice way to gather information or test students in a group setting to help you out. I'm going to pause again and ask if you have any questions. Okay, so I can see that there is a question. I'm going to ask if you could put the question in the question box or if you prefer me to unmute my microphone. Just let me know in the question box and I will do either one. Okay, I know there was a raised hand and now it got lowered. So I'm assuming the question, okay. Okay, so there is a question. Just give me one second, I'm going to check it. Do the teachers have to answer first or anyone can? So Christine, it doesn't matter at what point you enter the answer that is the right answer. So you could gather all the questions from the students and be the last person going in and answering the questions correctly. It's just at some point you have to go as an instructor or teacher into the system and have a row of answers that are correct. So when you're setting up Fluberu and telling it against which questions to measure the answers, you have to have that entry in the system. It doesn't have to be the first one, can be the last one, but it has to be there. Was that helpful? Well, I hope it was, and, and I, I can always clarify even more questions as they're coming. Please feel free to send them in. And what I would like to do next is going to be a big test for me. Okay, one more question. Awesome. Do the Fluberu pick the lowest percent on top? Um, no, I think it was based on the entry. So before, when we were looking at the, the list of names, we had Anna, Bob, John, Chris, Jessa. So the list was organized based on the time of submission. And so the system still kept it on the type of submission. It just accidentally, when I was filling in the answers, I basically did the first student with the lowest answers and the last one was 100%. The breakdown could be going in either way. So the system will not change the order of the submissions. It will still display everything based on the submissions. Okay. So let's just go back again. And there's a few more things I want to add because that's some of the things you may be asking for. At the beginning, I mentioned that it is possible to send grades or the responses to the students. And you probably at some point will come back and ask me, where do I do that? So before I continue, I just want to show you that if you were in the results where you see all the grades and information from Fluberu, if you click back on add-ons and Fluberu, you have more options to choose from. And one of them is sharing grades. Um, and when, that, when you click on that, what will happen is the system will pop up a box and it will ask you, okay, um, what do you want to use for the email field? So remember, as I said, that you need to ask your students for the email. The system knows that there's different questions. And so the list, the first one was provide your name, but the second question was email. So what I would need to do is here, say, okay, the email address question was question two, and change that to the email address so the system knows to pull information from that specific column. 
And then I have other options. I can include the list of questions and scores, and I can include the answer key, and I can also include a message. So I will follow all this information, click continue, and if there were emails in the, in the form, the system will distribute the answer to all the students using their email address. So again, if you have a bigger group or even just a few, it's a really nice way to gather information from the students, have Fluberu analyze the results, and then you can send back the responses to the students automatically or at least with some small customization. But you don't have to send the email one by one by one to all the students. And depending on the class you're running, depending on the level of comfort of your students with emails, that could be one of the ways you could be doing to introduce them to email as well. So practicing with them, receiving different emails, going in and checking emails, that could be one of the ways to do that as well. Okay, so now that we have done this, I'm going to see if I can go live and do all the steps again, but with a different example. So what I will be attempting to do is to quickly set up a Google form with three questions, very basic questions, really, really quick basic questions. And I have to remember to add the name and the email field. Email field is just for testing, so you get used to it. And then I will have to get the link to access the survey because I want to share it. Um, I will fill out the form so that I will have the answer key as well. I will try to share the link with you so that you will be able to fill out that form as well. And then we will be able to see the responses and then and apply Fulbaru to the res results. Depending on the group we have, it may go well, it may not go well. Um, we don't have a big group today, but I still hope it's going to work. So my first step is going to be to open a new tab because I really want to take you all the way from the beginning. Um, I'm going to go to my Gmail account, and this is going to be my work Gmail account, just so you know. Um, takes me in right into email, but in the top right corner, there's the, the nine squares, which is Google Apps. If I click on it, one of the options is Google Drive, and that's where I'll find my Google Forms. So I can click on it, and then I can click New. And then if I continue to more, the next option is Google Forms. So again, I just click on Google Drive, New. In the options for more, I found Google Forms, and I click on it. When I click on Google Forms, here's a new form that I can start and create from scratch. So I'm just going to do the testing form. So bear with me for a minute. Uh, there may be some typos, I apologize. Info about months. We are going to do a very quick questions about months. So you can see I can give it a title, I can give it introduction. So if you wanted to give tips or information for the students, you can put it in. As soon as I tap on untitled questions, it becomes a field I can change. The three questions I'm going to put in is, March is a third month of the year here. And option one will be yes. Option two will be no. Almost like a multiple choice question, right? Yes or no. When I finish, I can also say uh, this is a required field, so I'm going to say yes. So the system will not continue until I actually fill out this, that question to be able to continue. Now I can add, just click on class or other tools I have on the right side, or I can duplicate the question by clicking duplicate at the bottom. I'm just going to duplicate that, and now I can go in and change, and this one will be March has 30 days. And again, the question will be yes or no. So I have two questions now. If I want to go back, I can always go back to the tab and just change. I can say this is question one, this is question two, so that it's a bit easier for me for tracking. And then the other question I can go and I'll duplicate it again, just so that it's a bit easier. I'll go in and say it's number three. And the last question is a year has, and then the student has to choose. And I'm going to say 356 days, 365 days, or 363 days. Again, multiple choice, just have to click on it. And now I have three questions. I build everything, I can still go in. If I go to tools, there are different settings I can choose. You can preview, you can change the color palette. Right now it's purple, you can change it to something else. I want to make sure that this, this form is actually named. So if I click on Untitled, the system will take the very first text from the form. So I didn't have to type it in, it just automatically put it in. 
and my form is almost ready. So now that I have it ready, what I can do is I can click send. That's where you get information about sharing this form with others. So I can click send and I have a pop-up that tells me, okay, you can send it by email. You just have to put the information in or you can send it by link and then I can shorten the link and get the link right here. I'm going to copy it because I want to use it. There's also an option to embed it. Or if you're using social media, you can actually share it on social media as well. So I have the link and I copied that link. So I have it ready. In this case, I'm using organizational account that has alpha plus. And in this specific setting, um, I have to be very cautious of the fact that because it's an organizational account, the system will try to keep everything internally. So if I want to make sure that anyone can actually check, check information or access form, I have to go to settings and make sure that anyone can actually see it. So it's not only Alpha Plus team, but anyone can see this form. Otherwise, if I share the link with you, it will tell me, well, you don't have permission. So that's why I'm changing it here to anyone so anyone can submit uh, responses. And I hit save. So now I have my form set up and I have the link. What will happen next? is I'm going to open a new tab. And in the tab, I'm going to paste the link that I copied from the form. So now what happens is the system is taking me to the actual form where I can fill out the questions or students, this is what exactly students would see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in into our chat or question box and I'm going to paste the same link for you. So you can access this link. It should show up in your question box. Um, you can just click on that form or that link, and it should open in a new browser, or you can copy and open that in a new browser, and you're going to be able to go in and fill out the answers as well. So I'm coming back to the form, and I'm hoping you can do it too. Uh, I'll just fill it in and say, OK, uh, well, actually, I made one mistake. What am I missing? I'm missing the name and the email that I wanted to ask, right? So here we go. I can still go back to the form. This is the form I was working on. I can click Add Question. And I'm going to say Add Your Name. And this is not multiple choice. This is short answer. So I'm still editing the form. Even though I already have the link, I can still go back. And I can even drag questions so that I can reorder them. So now I have the name and I have the questions below. If I come back, before I continue, I have to click send just so that it kind of gets saved. I'm going to close it. But if I come back here and refresh, I believe, yes. So I came back, refresh the page, and the name is now here. So if you open the form and there was no name, please refresh the page and add the information. So in this case, I'm going to say Monica is my name. Uh, March is the third month of the year. I'm going to say yes. March has 30 days, I'm going to say yes. No, actually, it's not true. And a year has 365 days. So I'm putting in the right answers because my answers will be working as an answer key. I encourage you to make mistakes just for fun so we can test it together. When I fill in the answers, I click Submit, and everything is done. So please, if you have a chance, fill it out as well because when I come back to the form that I'm working on right now, um, I'm logged in. I can see the questions where I'm coming in, but I also start seeing responses. So because I filled it out, there's one response that I can see. And I can click on the tab, and it's going to tell me, OK, now I can see there's two responses. So that's perfect. If there's one more person who can fill it out, that would be great, because we will have a good, good chance to work with at least a, a few things we can compare. So perfect, three responses. So the system is actually summarizing everything in a visual format, which is great, but not great for me because I still don't know. Um, I can sort of visually see that some people answered their questions right and some people answered wrong. Um, there were different breakdowns or in some cases, everybody answered the same answer properly. So this is useful, but it's not as useful. I want that spreadsheet. So to find the spreadsheet, I go right here. There is a spreadsheet icon right here. I can click Create Spreadsheet. And the system is asking me, OK, is it a new spreadsheet or do you want to add to existing spreadsheet? I usually add a new spreadsheet. What that means is I will have a form and responses as two separate documents, but working together. And I can find them based on the name. So my form is called testing form. 
and my responses is called testing form slash responses. So it's very easy for me to relate them together. So I'm just going to keep it as it is and click create. And the system will take me directly into the form. So now you will see that this looks like a spreadsheet. This is Google Sheets that's displaying the information. I have the timestamp when the information was entered. I have the names that were added and answers to the questions. Very basic survey, very quick, but that's one of the quick ways for me to display and show you how I'm going about that. So now that I have all this information, how do I apply Fluboro? What I do is I click add-ons and keep in mind, I installed the Fluboro already because I was trying to do the steps for the slides. So it is already showing in my list of add-ons. Um, I can click Fluboro and it says enable Fluboro in this sheet. I'm going to say yes. It has been enabled, so I'm going to say OK. I may have to go back one more time and say Fluboru, grade assignment. So now it's going to go in and take me through the steps. So the first questions are, OK, the question, add your name. Is it a question or does it identify the student? It does identify the student, so I'm leaving it as is. Number one, two, and three are actual questions, so use normal grading for those. Perfect. Note that you can even decide on points. So you can give students two points or five points for each question they fill out. Or if it's a more complicated question, you can also change the ratings as well. I'm going to continue. And in this one, it's going to ask me, OK, so which submission should be used as the answer key? So my submission was the very first one. Again, Christine's question about the order. It could have been the last one. If Juanita was the teacher or was the one providing the right answers, I would click on Juanita's. If not, I'm just going to click on mine and continue. And now what happens is the system is going to tell me it has completed everything. There's different tips it's trying to give me. I'm just going to close it. And now you will see that there is an analysis. First of all, it's a new tab next to the submissions. If I click on submissions, it's back to what we have seen before the Fluboro. But now you have a new tab with all this information coming in, how many points were possible, how many submissions. Remember, there were three. Mine was the third one. But because it was the answer key, it doesn't count. And then it tells me, OK, there were total points, how many times submitted, and where were the mistakes. So you can see quick analysis of very, very brief survey we did together. And we went from creating the form, sharing the form, applying Fulboro to get the results. Questions? I'm just going to take a few minutes to see if you have any questions. If you would like me to go over something again, because maybe it was a bit too fast, please let me know. I'll repeat the steps. We have a bit of time left. No questions so far? That's OK. Again, keep them coming as you are going through this or analyzing different things. I'm just quickly to go back, going to go back to the forms and try to find our results. Here they are. Um, so one thing that I didn't do in the questions was the email. Remember, I actually um, went back and added the name, but I did not another question for email. And if, if emailed grade, if there was an email option and we apply this sh sharing of the grades, the system here would update the information and say, you actually shared the grades with the students. So that's something that you can still play with. I know in some programs, students don't share their email, so it's not very applicable. But in some situations, this may be very useful as well. OK, I'm going to go back to my slides because we are getting close to the end. Um, when it comes to Fluboro, the, the person who actually developed the tool and provides the information has developed a really good user guide and instructional resources. So when we finish the session, I really encourage you to go back and review them um, the user guide has step-by-step -step information of everything I just went through as well. So that will give you a chance to try it again and review it again, see if uh, I missed anything or if you want specific clarifications on things. It may be useful for you to use as well. And the very last thing will be our feedback for today. It was less than an hour, which is okay because that will give you a bit of time to play uh, if you would like to try out the Google Forms or Fluboru on your own. Um, you can always send me questions afterwards, of course, or contact me by phone, by email, uh, Skype, whichever way works for you. I will be very happy to help out. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the link with you to the survey. Um, and that way uh, you will be able to fill it out before we wrap up for today. So I'm just going to put it again in your question box. So it should pop up. And before you get it, uh, I'm just going to answer any more questions. I can see there's a question coming. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes to see what's the question. Okay, so the clarification is, um, I said that the learners will get the answers, but will they see other learners? No. What will happen, the learner will only get the information about their own answers and the information about the answer key to, to compare it to the proper answer. So they will not see information from other learners. And that's why this, each student is asked for their own email and they will be getting their own feedback only. Any more questions? So as we are waiting to see if there is anything else you would like to ask about, I just wanted to let you know that we are working on uh, setting up more webinars for the upcoming year. We actually had a meeting this morning and uh, we just posted a quick chart for you to let you know what topics are coming up. It is already available on our website under webinar schedule. Um, as we work through the topics, we'll be adding descriptions and registration links. But at least for now, you will be able to go and see what's coming up in the coming year. We will have 10 English webinars, two ASL webinars, and two Francophone webinars. OK, so the question about sharing the results on Fluboro or the actual answers. What will happen is that when the system will gather the feedback, so let's come back here for a minute. And let's say I'm going to look at um, Christine as one of the answers. So the system knows that there were total points, what was the percentage, when it was submitted, and what were the actual answers to each of the questions. And if the student provided the email address, there will be next to the name, there will be email address as well. If I went back to add on and clicked on, let me just go back here, Fluberu, share grades, what will happen is that the system will take the information and say, okay, um, here, I will have to select the email because that will be the only option that I will have to do. I don't have it, so I can't email it. And then basically, we'll say, okay, how do you want to share the, e the information? And then include a list of questions and scores. See how it links here? I think that will be your question, Christine. So if you are doing questions and scores, potentially it may show the responses from others, but not by name. I don't believe it will tell students what's the name. So remember how we were looking at the summary just visually showing us that there were 33% answered yes and 60% said no. That's probably what will be shared, but not the personal information tying the student to the actual answers. And the answer key will be to show students what were the right answers as well. So I hope that is a bit more clear. Uh, if not, we can try and test it with the emails as well, maybe after the session. If you could try it with your, st with your staff or with me, I will be very happy to try that. If, if that makes a difference in clarifying how it's going to work. Okay, and so that will be wrapping up for today. I'm just going to go back again to the information about webinars. Uh, as I mentioned, there, was new, there are new topics coming up that we're excited about. This year, there's going to be more presenters, more guest presenters, but also more presenters. Some of our colleagues from Alpha Plus will be presenting, so it's not always me. There will be other presenters also um, doing some work. Um, and I'm very excited about that, and I hope you will be excited too. Uh, check out the topics that we have. Let us know if there is anything else you may be interested in. And um, as soon as we'll know the registration process for everyone, we will be sharing that information as well through links or newsletters that we are sending out on an ongoing basis. And for now, I'm just going to wrap up and thank you again for participating. It was great to see you online. I know that it's a busy time for everyone or vacation time for, for many of you. So I really appreciate you taking your time and being here today. And uh, before you go, please fill out the survey. It is very important to me to find out if this was useful 
and how we can improve our webinars in the future. So simply follow the Fluid Surveys link that I shared with you through the question box, and that way you will be able to go directly to the survey and fill it out. Um, because we recorded the session, I will be sharing the recording with you as well. We also post it on YouTube, so you will be able to watch that again through our YouTube channel. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that or you need more information. There will be a follow-up email to uh, everyone who registered, whether participated or not, did not participate. And that follow-up email will include the link to the slides, the link to the recording. And if we don't get your feedback on the survey, I will also include the survey in the follow-up email as well, just to make sure that we get the feedback from you. And if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to start wrapping up to give you a bit more time to play with different things and try different things. And I want to thank you again for being here. So what I would like to do next is I'm just going to take a few minutes to see if there's any other questions coming in from you. If not, thank you so much for your time. The easiest way to exit the webinar is just to click on the close the window and that will close the webinar for you. Thank you.